Hi, welcome to Getting Started with ArcGIS Hub and ArcGIS Enterprise Sites. We're glad you're here. My name is Katie Thompson, and I'm the lead technical writer for ArcGIS Hub, and I will be moderating this session today with my colleague, Andrew Turner, CTO of ArcGIS Hub. Um, please feel free to ask any questions throughout this session in our uh, Q&A um, section, um, and we will do our best to get a response to you, um, as well as at the end of the session um, dur during our um, open mic uh, commenting period. If we're unable to answer your question, we'll do the best to follow up with you via email if we can get your name um, and enjoy the presentation. Happy Developer Summer 2021. And welcome to Getting Started with ArcGIS Hub and ArcGIS Enterprise Sites. My name is Graham and I'll be walking you through today's content. So what is Hub? Hub's a cloud-based engagement and collaboration platform that helps customers work more effectively with your community. And that community word can really mean a lot of different people. It could mean the people that live in the area you govern. It could mean your external, not like business partners or um, other governmental agencies you work with. It could be uh, just different organizations working together. A very, very broad definition. Hub helps you do this by four main areas, conveying information in an easy to use form factor, sharing data and content, collecting data back where necessary from the community, and organizing that collaboration around specific projects, goals, or initiatives. There's two flavors of Hub, Hub Basic and Hub Premium. So on the basic side, Hub lets you launch websites, and these websites feature your content. We're going to be looking at these websites in good detail. Um, but they contain all of the different flavors of WebGIS and maybe even third-party content that you embed in. This is meant to be available to a non-GIS user, um, a communications person, someone who's focusing on curating the content, and a non-programmer. Hub also lets you run on a custom domain, which is an important way to blend the WebGIS experience inside of your other website properties. On the searching and catalog front, Hub lets you take a subset of your ArcGIS Online ecosystem and make it available in a search catalog via a search tool, as well as search result pages and things like that. This is where if you have thousands of items, a Hub site can service them to your customers and search is the main way of people finding what they're looking for. For collecting on the other side from your community, Hub Premium allows you to license community identities. These are actual named users for folks that don't work for your organization. And then they can engage with you via events, surveys, commenting, um, crowdsourced feedback, and things like that. And we organize that engagement around this idea of an initiative, these project-focused uh, slants on this functionality uh, so that you can form teams, you could message and pull in your community users, you can have events, and uh, collaborate around a specific goal. We have a kind of a cousin application in the enterprise space. Um, ArcGIS Enterprise Sites is the same technology, but targeting, allowing you to make websites and web pages targeting that non-GIS user. Um, this application is available inside of ArcGIS Enterprise uh, as of 1061 and greater, and it, it lets you launch these item types. So very, um, similar to ArcGIS Hub, but available for you on your own networks. I, I get this question, if you're kind of planning out which one to use, um, ArcGIS Hub is a SaaS product. It's on, it's on top of ArcGIS Online. If you're able to use ArcGIS Online, using Hub will be nice because it basically takes away the onus of having to you know, worry about your infrastructure and hosting and all that stuff. Um, Hub also is a SaaS product, so it, it leads enterprise sites and features and functionality. Um, the, the new things that are coming to enterprise sites are already in Hub today. So you can kind of check it out to see where enterprise sites is going. Hub also has some webby features. Um, we use a content distribution network to speed up page load and things like that. We also uh, take care of your robots.txt file that helps Google and other search engines crawl, um, crawl your site and list you and rank you highly on, on their search results pages. Hub contains three systems that as of now, Enterprise Sites doesn't have. Um, the custom domain support is one of them. You can obviously use Enterprise on your own domain, 
but it only supports the domain of your portal. Um, whereas Hub supports multiple custom domains and you can configure it. There's also an expanded public data download system uh, and caching over the core functions within um, server. So the nice thing there is if you have a really popular data set, it's not gonna you know, tax that system underneath. It'll be cached in the web and we'll be able to serve lots of downloads quickly without you having to scale up your server infrastructure. Um, similarly, we index public data in a way that makes it easier to search on a hub site. Uh, that public index is only available in hub. And finally, uh, we do offer a data.json DCAT resource for federating data out from a hub site into a national data platform like data.gov here in the United States. Finally, that user offering, um, the community user and the features we'll look at there is currently only available in hub. Now, that's not to say enterprise sites is a slouch. Enterprise sites has all of the same core technology and if you, cannot use a SaaS product is a great alternative because you have more control over all of the environment than you would using a SaaS product. So if, you, if you're not able to use Arches online, uh, I wouldn't be too disappointed. Enterprise Sites is um, all of the same web tech we're gonna look at today, available in disconnected environments and you get full control of the environment. So um, either option is really good, uh, but this helps you maybe make a decision. So let's take a look at a hub site. I wanna show off this one from the state of Hawaii. So kudos to you all. Um, this is a rather complex hub site, but it shows um, really the art of the possible in terms of building um, a hub site that blends into your web. Uh, so this is where the GIS meets the web and hopefully feels very much like a website. So in this site, you can read uh, the purpose here up at the front and very graphic, very easy to see what's kind of the purpose of this site. They're embedding applications. These are dashboards focusing here. And we also have this navigation. So right up front, we can kind of see how hub sites work. There's a layout here at the top. You can embed applications. You can you know, scroll forever, so to speak, and see all the different pieces there. There's static content, image content, um, ways to jump into things like ArcGIS dashboards or maybe documents or downloading a report. Up at the top, we have this navigation Hub sites also have pages and you can make multiple pages for a site. So up here, you can see we're transitioning between different pages on this site. Each has its own layout. Now I mentioned that search earlier at the top there, and there's also a search card for this as well. You can search the hub for the content that's attached to the hub. And you'll see this is that search experience. And when I do that, I can filter the data by type, by date, uh, category or tag and jump into any of the different pieces of content. And this should feel very familiar to you if you're familiar with ArcGIS Online because it's all backed by the power of ArcGIS Online. All these hub sites are doing is surfacing that content in a different form factor. So let's look at the basics just to give you a place. Um, I recommend if you've never used the app before to just try it, you know, build something with no plan just to get a feel for how it works. So if you're making your first site, you're going to need to be a creator user type in ArcGIS Online or in ArcGIS Enterprise with the Essential Apps Bundle. You'll know you'll have it because it'll have this little icon next to your app bundle for hub sites and pages. You'll need roughly a publisher level of privilege. You don't need all of the privileges that come with a publisher, but a good chunk of them. These are the ones you need by minimum. It's also really nice to have a few extra privileges. Um, if you have the create group with update capabilities, you'll basically be given the option to let others edit your site. So say you go on vacation, site's running in production, you can have a colleague kind of keep after it for you. And if you have the administrative power to assign users, you can push users into groups, which is really nice because um, you don't have to ask them to accept an invite to get access to see your site. So those are some nice to have ones. Um, if you have them, it'll be good. So finding the app, it's in the app launcher. It's there under hub. Um, it's there under sites and enterprise. It's also in the create menu down here in the corner with sites. Pretty easy. And that's in ArcGIS Online in the home application or in the enterprise portal. So looking at where you land when you first land in enterprise or in ArcGIS Online and you click hub, you land in what we call the overview. And this gives you a little bit of a bird's eye view of the application and how much content has been launched. If you've never used it before, It'll be empty, it'll say zero, and you're gonna click that new button. But if you're returning, you'll see recent sites that you've edited, 
and you can come back to the list by clicking manage. You can also look at all of your content. And if you have Hub Premium, you'll get extra content around how many community users you're signing up, how active that they are, uh, and there's a dashboard below. There's also this documentation section, which is great if you're trying to access key parts of our documentation to learn how this application works. So let's make something and let's just show some of that, how to get around and how to use the application. So I'm here in my organization, the City of X. Uh, it's my demo organization. And um, if I click into Hub, you'll see I land on that overview and I have 684 sites, that's a lot. Uh, um, you can tell there may not all be in production, but if I wanna make a new one, I click new. And if I just fill this out, I'll get a blank one. What's nice is I can also browse templates and we do surface all of the solutions from our state and local government team, as well as our solutions team more broadly. So these are some templates you can start from. Um, some of our most popular templates have been using uh, hub sites to feature vaccine information for the coronavirus, to feature election outreach, um, citizen pop problem reporter is a good one. So if there's one of these sounds like something you're trying to do, you're trying to like surface information for a specific cause, definitely check those out. Uh, those were recently made available to all ArcGIS uh, subscribers. Um, so um, if you haven't checked them out, there's some really good, even if you don't like the topics, there may be some stylistic things that you like. Um, one that I really like is the project site. It's really generic, nice and easy. But if you have a more project focus as opposed to data focus, you can do that one. Um, as well as the share open data is a, a favorite of mine because it, um, it is that data focused site and that's a great first place to start. So let's do, let's do that. I'm going to say Dev Summit 2021. I can't believe it's been a year. Been in this chair a long time. Just kidding. But seriously. Uh, so as it creates, so you can see there's some tips here just explaining how the application works, um, especially when you're unpacking some of these bigger templates. It can take a little while to lay down all the different items that are needed. So it'll run its thing. It'll create some stuff. And we'll talk about that in a minute. But then you're you're dropped onto the application. And this is our kind of like little tips as to the primary navigation when you're in edit of all the different sections that you can basically work in. So you can kind of read what everything does. And again, at the bottom, there's links to our documentation. Um, we'll talk about it in more detail, but the layout editor is what you'll be met with first. And then if you'd like, you can switch to other aspects of the hub site. So there's the dashboard, which is nice to see. Has anybody looked at this yet? No, uh, but soon, maybe. Um, there's the team section, which if I have the right privileges, I have a core team that comes with it. And this is where I can bring in other users of my organization. I'll pick on Alan Carroll from the Story Maps team, and he's going to help me build my site. So now he has access to edit my site, and I can message him and, you know, let him know, hey, check it out. Um, that's all taken care of behind the scenes. Um, in the events section, I can launch events. If you have Hub Premium and you're trying to make the site more than just a one-way communication of information, you can click create new event and that will hang an event off the bottom of your site, which is searchable and findable. And you can even include a calendar in your site layout to feature the upcoming events in your organization. So that's really cool. Um, feedback is, us exposing all the survey functionality from survey one, two, three in the application. Um, we wanna highlight this because surveys are really effective ways of bringing data in, bringing opinions in. Um, so you can see all the surveys you launched, you can attach them to your current site. Um, and you, know, you can jump right into the survey one, two, three editor from here, which is nice. If you do have Hub Premium and you sign people up, uh, there's a follow functionality that is on each site very much like subscribing. So there's a button on the corner of each site. I'll show it to you right now, just so you can see it. Um, this little star that lets me, if I click on that, I will follow and I can create a user that does that. They will show up, anybody who does that will show up in your community section here. And what's nice is you can then engage them, email them updates, message them. Um, you know, you can basically try to find the people who are engaged with you to, uh, to work with in the future. Content library, we'll talk about in more detail, is where you power the what's in the search results. And the group manager powers the content library. So by default, we get a group for your content that's created for your convenience. But if you have a bunch of groups already organized in ArcGIS Online, you can attach different groups of content right here, and then it'll power 
what shows up in your content library. So there's kind of two sides of a coin here, and we'll look at that in more detail in a moment. So when I made that, what just happened? Uh, a bunch of items get created in ArcGIS Online, and items are really useful because it controls who has access to what. So we got a hub site application, or if you're in enterprise, it's called a site application. Um, it got that content group. And if I had that privilege, it got that core team. So each of these has a different purpose, search catalog, who can edit my site. Um, and then if you have premium, you get this initiative and followers item and group, and that powers who's clicked to that star. So premium adds a little bit extra on top of hub. If you make a page like we saw on that Hawaii site, that's just another item and it's called a hub page or a site page. And then events also come with a group because we need to track who clicks attend. So it's really nice using hub. It just kind of juggles the platform for you. And then if you ever log into, you know, the Arches online and you like go look at your content, you'll see all this stuff in there. It, you know, it'll look like any other content in Arches online. So really, really easy. Um, there's the groups that get created, et cetera. So, that's a little bit of the basics. Now, the hard part is really coming up with what is my site about and you know, curating that content. So you need to have a plan, a good like schematic of what you're trying to do. Now that you've kind of played with the app, you should outline some objectives. Um, I usually tell people, you know, in terms of time investment, sharing data privately or publicly is really simple. You have content in your platform, you want to get it out there get it onto a hub site so that it's a little more accessible for the non-GIS user, done. You can set it and forget it. A lot of people do that. But that's all, that's kind of one-way engagement. It's like, hey, here's some data, you know, it's out there. Um, but if you've noticed, like the most interesting websites that you revisit are about something a little bit more than just data. Maybe it's about a project. Maybe it's around like a multi-year program. Maybe it's uh, using some of those engagement features to actually like ask the, audience that's visiting your site to lean in. So those will take more time, not to really set up and click the buttons, but you should revisit them because if the site is seen as some static one-off, it was built one time, people will look at it, then they'll never come back. Your Google Analytics numbers will show that and you know won't be as successful as it could be. So plan on the time up front to get involved with your site, to make it a vibrant place that people will want to engage with. And really, if you think about you know, all of the different pieces of content and a hub site kind of being like a gallery. It's like, hey, here's all, if you're in the gallery, you really need to pick what's the stuff that's on the walls and how often does it change? And really that comes down to this workflow, which is a very familiar one for all of the ArcGIS products, but you have some stuff that's out there, <laughs> items, content, data, PDFs, PowerPoints, you name it. You register them in as items in ArcGIS Online and you give it metadata, thumbnails, tags, organize the data. You share it to the content group. In the content library, you can pull data in to the content group as well. And then it shows up on your site. So sourcing data, search for your portals, search ArcGIS online, talk to your business lines or upload your own. Um, all really easy to do right there in ArcGIS online. If you are trying to source data live from a system, uh, we do have this tool that we use internally to the hub team that's open source called Coop. It's this stateless way to move data into and out of, uh, out of um, uh, Esri geospatial formats. And we have a number of connectors already set up so you can pull data from S3 or from uh, Google Fusion tables or Google Sheets or Socrata. You can check out how to pump data into and out of. And you can also build your own adapter. It's pretty easy. Um, if you're not sure what data to go after and you happen to be a government in the audience today, um, the Sunlight Foundation has this nice list of the ideal open data sets to share, and you can get yourself ranked on here. And if you have them all, you'll be ranked highly, as is Cincinnati right now. So good job, Cincinnati, Las Vegas, LA, nice job. So I showed this a little bit, but just to go a little more detail, um, this all happens here on either the content library, which is really just managing the items going into and out of the content group. So I can like come in here, and find content in my organization that's already been added. You know, I can pick data sets and basically just share items to a group. And you'll see I have it there. I can also use this new menu and add content there. Like if I have a something on my desktop I wanna upload, I can upload it right here. It will create an item behind the scenes. So, you know, I can do that really, really easily. Um, if I come back to this, I can, basically do lightweight item editing. 
in the content library, you know, mess with the extent feature and image, change the tags, change the summary, all that good stuff. But it's it's really no substitute if you want to really dive into it, go back into ArcGIS Online and use the powerful tools available to you there to uh, edit that item and you know edit completely all the different aspects of it um, to make it exactly what you want it to be. So you know it, it's kind of like lightweight editing, targeting that sort of lightweight usage, but you always have this escape hatch if you need to, to jump out to ArcGIS Online to, to do the more heavyweight things and to get it exactly as you want to. And we'll talk more about data quality here in a bit, making sure that's good. Once you have a few, this is that symbiotic relationship of once you pull things on, it shows up under your site in its search results. And then you get that nice page that shows you kind of the content itself, if it's sites to load, there it is. Okay, we're good. And you can jump back into the editor and you know you can kind of understand a little bit of how the navigation's working here using the breadcrumbs and content here at the top. Okay, so a little bit lightning round on data housekeeping. And these will benefit every application that you use in hub enterprise sites across the whole of ArcGIS Online, whole of ArcGIS Enterprise. Great content makes great sites. So humanize your data with attributes, with attribute aliases. You know, make sure in when you're publishing data, you put an alias on it so it's human readable, makes the data look better in the application. Um, you can do that in desktop as well. Turn on editor tracking gives more metadata uh, to that shows basically when the data changes and that'll show up in all the places. Turn on metadata if you haven't done that on your ArcGIS Online organization or on your portal. It's under the items tab of your org settings. If you're an administrator, you can turn on metadata, pick your format, and that will allow you to set metadata on the items, which will then show up as this view metadata link here, which will then show you your metadata. This makes your data official. And uh, if you're publishing any sort of authoritative data, you, you, you should do this or else your data won't probably be used. For large data, try to make the uh, geometry simplified, reduce the number of vertices to improve performance. Uh, latest and greatest for server. Um, there are certain features that won't work if you're on a really old version of server. So try to stay up to date if you can. Um, don't alter the max default, uh, maximum number of records returned from server. Uh, we'll handle paging through things like that. Uh, but if it's too big, it can cause browser issues. Um, if you or organizing your layers, don't lump them all into one big service. Organize them in multiple services. You'll get different item metadata on each one. And try, if you do bundle, don't go more than 20 a service if you have to. I get asked this sometimes uh, for, my, for my data, do I host it in ArcGIS Online or on-prem? Uh, so Hub will absorb some of the public traffic with its caching system, but, um, you know, so when possible use Hub to run the website experience, but host data in enterprise for that connection to the system of record and consider maybe re-hosting data in online for larger popular data sets so you don't have to worry about scale. Um, and then I always like to tell people, don't hoard credits. It's not a huge deal um, to host a couple data sets in ArcGIS Online. For imagery, if you're trying to make a download experience for imagery specifically, I recommend creating an experience or web app builder that lets you browse the imagery and then download specific tiles. Uh, we are working on a native in-app way of doing this, but it's not yet available. So this is the best way to service imagery downloads. Um, and set a license on your data, similar to the metadata, it's really useful. Creative Commons is a really well-established way to pick a license. You can answer some simple questions with a lawyer present or with your boss present or whoever is authority. Um, it will give you a little code snippet. You can drop it in ArcGIS Online's terms of use and you'll get a cool badge and it's very recognized by the community. Uh, you can also have your own licenses, so. Rest not lawyers, you can put what you want in a box and people will have to oblige by it on your sites. So once you have your data all looking good, you need to bring life to the data. And Hub can be a really nice springboard into the world that is the WebGIS data visualization application landscape. Um, so there is a right tool for the job. I usually recommend that every site have one of these four ingredients. So something that informs, listens, convenes, and monitors. So for informing, which is like communicating goals and measurements and educating and policies, um, uh, hub sites can feature maps, applications, story maps, experiences that immerse you in the data. Um, if you've licensed it urban, if you have urban plan information, the 3D scenes showing the potential plans and any configurable app. So that's a great way to inform people 
pick the right tool for the job using one of those applications and feature it as prominently on your hub site as you'd like. Um, so there are some examples. So like, don't just show the data, design around the data and build that immersive experience using Experience Builder. Uh, put address bars on things. People like to search for themselves, like let them find themselves. Uh, really useful for data like, um, you know, I'm looking for the place to get a coronavirus test. I'd rather just type my address in than have to, you know, find my address on the map. If the data is static and unchanging, you can make it more interesting by adding analysis layers just to uh, show distance uh, in a unique way, like walk time is really good. And always include a story map if it's a project um, for why. Um, there's always the type of person that wants to go A, B, C through a, con uh, through a topic. Um, what's really nice is if you turn on a certain function, um, you can have apps load underneath the header of your site. So it kind of keeps the context. Um, so here's a story map loading under uh, the header here. Um, and that's called the app page option. And that's available in your site settings. So that's a good way to keep the user in when they click on the app, it keeps them kind of in the website proper so that they can get around. For listening, um, this is getting data, asking for opinions, creating that two-way engagement. Um, the Esri solutions here are, you know, survey one, two, three, um, quick capture if you're able to license it um, to, for your anonymous public, which is a hub premium thing, is a really good way to do like point in time capture of information. You can do things like running contests with quick, quick capture. You can find potholes. You can do lots of interesting things. Have people canvas um, and you know tap as they drive, so to speak, safely, um, or have somebody sit next to you tapping as they drive. Um, so yeah, there's lots of options here. You can listen for data, listen for opinions, help schedule stuff with surveys. Um, a lot of great stuff. Survey one two three is fantastic at um, designing all of the different content. Convening, getting people together. So having events, um, hub events with Hub Premium is the way to do that. Um, and that'll use those community identities and get together. Um, it'll give you, you know, these, um, basically this event page tells you where the event is. If it's online, it has a link. It lets you add it to your calendar. It's uh, well integrated, very easy to use. And you can also brag about your engagement. If you're running events, you can kind of create that FOMO by uh, on your layout, counting how many events are happening, for example. Um, they're all underlyingly stored in a feature service, so you can put a stat card on it, for example, and have people be like, whoa, lots of stuff is happening, I should participate. So make your engagement a goal. Monitoring, a lot of great solutions here, like insights and dashboard and experience builder. Um, you can, you know, we have some light charting and summary stat functionality in Hub, but you can also embed any of those applications. Um, so that's really nice. There's, you know, all sorts of different ways to visualize data. Um, and again, if you've licensed it, Insight's good. You can like filter. Uh, I definitely recommend putting a Google Analytics key. So not don't just monitor and show the information outward. You can also monitor inward and see how much traffic is coming on your um, on your hub site, what people are looking at, what pages are the most popular, that kind of stuff. You'll get emails like this, which is nice. It tells you the delta. So I, I showed this a little bit, but you can in the content library you can springboard into any of these applications right here. Um, so you can click like new app and launch into an application here. We also surface those templates here as well. So um, this template has recommended pages that come with it, but you can click over to all templates and, you know, search by different types of things, um, you know, look for dashboards, you know, find, find interesting content if that's the way you think. Um, the other thing you can do is just come over here and, and launch apps like this and create new things there or you can use the content area and click this create menu. Really, you know, there's lots of options here. So um, explore the different ones and test on your users and find out what's right for you. Um, you know, like once you pick an app, uh, it'll create and then it'll share it back to your um, content library and you'll be able to edit it and work with it. Um, so if you start from a template or you start blank, um, it's all good. So pretty easy. Now let's talk about that layout editor. So that's kind of the icing on the cake, the last mile of everything, just putting a nice, simple home layout on the top. Um, so at the high level, there's a header, a theme, everything's organized into these rows. There's cards that are placed inside the rows, and then there's a footer. Now the header and the footer carries with you on every page as you uh, navigate around the site. So um, 
I want to just show that really quick because, you know, I had this example here earlier and this header, no matter where I am on the site is always going to show. And all the way at the bottom here, there's a footer. And as I change pages, the header stays with me and the footer stays with me, but the content in the middle changes. So, um, and that content here is organized by rows and cards inside of the rows. So, um, and the theme too is the fonts and colors in use. So you'll be able to kind of have a common look and feel as you move around. So the number one thing you'll use is the text card. This also lets you do custom HTML. Um, recommend easy scannable headings, like make use of the heading page structure, um, take an inventory of your terminology, uh, make sure there's a clear hierarchy and uh, chunk the site for different audiences. So, you know, it, make it very scannable. I can scroll up and down and find basically the right entry point for me. Uh, the text card is gonna be great at doing that. And if you know HTML and CSS, Enterprise Sites and Hub offer a very rich HTML editor. Um, and there's lots of examples here um, on this QR code. I guess it would be easy if I, there we go, on the QR code um, here in the corner. Um, there's another talk uh, called Deep Customizing Hub and Enterprise Sites if you're interested in learning a little bit more about that. The last is then, you know, you have your text content, you have your other content, but now you want to show off that content. And there's like a couple of cards that you could use here. You can embed the application in the app card or the survey card or the map card. And that's great if you have one or two things because it's like, here's your thing. You know, look at that site we were just looking at. They had a dashboard. That's what they really wanted me to see. Um, if you have four items like that, I recommend the gallery. Now, you don't have to. You can embed four in a row, as you saw. Like people do that. Um, but uh, that's kind of a yard sale in my book. So I'd say embed one and then display the others, like pick the one you want people to see. But if you have thousands of items, I mean, you can't expect somebody to scroll forever and find the right thing. So that's where we're, you would need to lean on the category card and the search experience on each site. So kind of use this to guide which card to use in which situation. You can bend the rules, there are no rules, but um, try to keep in mind that not everybody is gonna be sitting at a desktop when they're consuming the site, they might be on the phone. And you know nobody likes to do this for too long, unless it's Instagram. But even then, so like you know, try to keep it keep it short if you can. So let's look at the layout editor in more detail. So if I go back, I'm going to go back. This is where you know I was in the editor for my app. I'm going to X out, go back. So go back to my site. So just to highlight a couple of those concepts, I have these rows here. And you can see I get some override controls and I can change the background image and um, you know blend like the image that I used with a color to make this sort of nice washed out effect. Um, there's, there's talks about little techniques like that available on YouTube and I'll show you some resources here in a second. If I click on any of these cards, you see I get these controls and we can pick things up and move them around. So not that I'd wanna do that, but like you can click to edit or you can drag or you can remove. It's pretty straightforward. This is that text card. It's kind of deceptively uh, simple looking, but um, it actually has a lot of power. So not only can you edit with a you know rich text editor, but you can do things like insert accordions and you know have like examples given to you. You can also, if you're an expert, come down here and enter into the HTML editor, which is really nice if you know what you're doing. Um, and you know we support a large variety of tags and content, so you can really customize and. You can even enter your own style blocks and write CSS if you want to. Um, one other cool thing is you can, um, down here in this row CSS class, you can give the whole row a class name and then target different elements that are only in this row using that class name. So if you know HTML and CSS, there's a lot of flexibility. It looks easy um, and it is easy as long as you stay on the rails, but if you need to dip in to do something custom or you have a really specific requirement, text card's really good for that. Back here in the layout drawer, this is where I have all those cards I can use. So if I'm embedding an application, I can drag one out and I have this application card that lets me pick, you know, basically something in my content. Who knows what I'm going to find? Demo orgs aside. Yeah, that's not great, but <laughs> I can embed an app. If I wanted to do that uh, layout pattern where I, you know, have four or more, maybe I want to use a gallery. So I can pick the gallery and then, you know, maybe tick on the types of data that I want. 
And what's cool about this is if I uncheck, maybe if I, I gotta remember what I had in here. I think it was data. Yeah, there's the data. It'll automatically pull in the group of data from your content library just by dragging it out. So by using the content library, you're already kind of filling in the gallery. Um, but if you want to go your own way, you can go manual mode and pick items specifically to pick, you know, include, and it'll, you know, populate in and all good to go right there. So a little bit, few options there. Um, all of these have little tips in terms of how they work and there's documentation about them and other talks that go into more detail, but um, pretty hopefully easy to use, you know, um, uh, layout editor. We have this draft system here. So you don't have to commit to the site immediately. Like the changes won't be live. You can like test out the draft. Be like, oh, that's terrible. You can send the draft, you know, to a stakeholder using the share URL button. Go back to the editor and be like, nah, -uh, we're not doing it. And, you know, take it off and delete the draft. Never talk about it again. <laughs> so uh, really, really nice and easy system to work with. When you're ready to change who can see it, you can come over to sharing and change public, owner, private. You can add other groups to be able to work with your data. It'll tell you who's can edit, who can, who's, who can edit if you add an edit group that you're into it. So kind of nice, convenient way to uh, make sure that you're, um, you know, sharing appropriately and not, not getting yourself in any trouble with the law, the sharing law. Okay, so we're at the end now and getting ready to take your questions. You're gonna notice it's not nighttime probably, <laughs> but I have some resources for you. So esri.com slash hub, great place to find a jump off point to lots of resources, eBooks, playlists, all of the stuff I'm gonna show in here. You don't need to write it down. Um, we have training resources, Esri Academy, Learn, lessons and paths. We have YouTube playlists. Again, esri.com has them on there. How-to playlists and hub video playlists and customer playlists. Um, our uh, Maria does a great job. Our Maria, um, our product marketing team does a great job uh, at curating this stuff. So really good stuff. Um, if you're wanting to stay up to date, the application does change pretty frequently. We like to do research um, as well. So sign up for our hub newsletter. Um, if you wanted to we have a whole section of the blog where we publish changes as well. And there's a change log. It's a little granular, but we do, uh, every time the application changes, we um, you know, publish a, a note about what's changed. We also link to the blog, so you can come in here at any time and see, see what's going on. And Hub is great for public data because you can search. So we keep a gallery. Um, our Brenda keeps a gallery. No, our, our product management team keeps a gallery um, of, Examples. If you want to be on the examples, uh, drop us a line, askhub at esri.com. You can also type in stuff in Hub itself and it'll search all of the public public data. So you can like not only look for data, but you can look for sites that have the word tree in it and be inspired by what, what other people are doing. That's cool. You know, pretty easy. Um, and uh, of course, Esri has professional services and Hub specialty partners that are listed here. So if you need help or you want someone to kind of help you strategize or help you design, um, great, great resources are available to you as well. And thank you so much. Um, really excited uh, and look forward to seeing what you all are able to produce. Now, I think we're getting ready for questions and turn it over to Katie. Hi again, thank you everyone for joining. Uh, we're looking forward to uh, answering your questions. Um, so head over uh, to where you can ask those. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll talk with you soon. Thank you. All right, so uh, I've got a question here um, about, oops, sorry, checking in. Do sites with a gallery usually have different types of items, like a combination of data, apps, web maps, or can a gallery 
um, just to be all apps. Uh, so Lindy, yes, you can use any combination of content that's supported in ArcGIS Hub as part of your gallery. Um, so that could include, for example, as a dashboard, data sets, um, uh, web app builder, any item that you have shared to your content loop library or is part of a group, um, you can use those options in the gallery setting to uh, populate that. And then choose how many of those items um, you would like to display. Uh, you can also manually select um, individual items that have been shared with your organization or that you own um, so that you can grab other people's content uh, to power your gallery without needing to use um, a group. All right, so another one, uh, what are the main differences between online and enterprise sites as of today? Um, a lot of the same functionality that's available in ArcGIS Hub becomes available in ArcGIS Enterprise. Uh, the differences in what's available today is based off of our release schedule. So Hub releases very frequently every week, generally on Tuesdays. Um, and so uh, while online is updating rapidly, uh, ArcGIS Online Enterprise, or excuse me, ArcGIS Enterprise sites receives um, all of those updates uh, at their yearly version releases. Um, some of the functionality that's not included, however, uh, with ArcGIS Enterprise that is with online um, includes uh, community accounts um, and events. So those are things that uh, are part of the community engagement uh, content that's available with Hub, but is it with ArcGIS Enterprise. Joel, you have a question here about um, how many apps dashboards uh, can you embed? Uh, you have users who have embedded 20 apps through iframes enterprise sites and the performance of the web apps really has deteriorated um, when viewing. Uh, that's to be expected. Um, site performance uh, is impacted when embedding quite a lot of iframes. So we recommend that you shift to using a gallery card uh, for that content. Um, or using pages to individually embed an iframe one or two at a time per page. Um, and that will uh, help with handling the performance and loading of that site. Okay, so here's one about, can you set up a hub that is internal? It does not need a specific login or does not need an account, like a public hub behind a firewall. Uh, so I guess it would depend on um, what you're hoping to use that hub site for. Um, you can, uh, with ArcGIS Enterprise, that behind the firewall on-premise um, functionality is available there, uh, but anyone accessing your sites will require an account. Same thing with Hub is if you want to share your Hub site uh, internally, as some people do to create like a department site or like a um, course site for like a university class. Uh, all of that content can be shared internally technically through groups and with the organization, but it will require um, a person to sign in so that they can access that um, since all of that is technically re uh, referred to as internal. Okay, I'm going to uh, lean on Andrew for this in there um, about, is there uh, a reference that shows the version of Cedar Charts and its dependencies that are used in the current and past versions of Sites and Hub? Um, hoping Andrew, you might have some insight there. Yeah, I can. So um, for those that don't know, just you, you dropped in something that's very technical for a moment there is uh, Cedar is, um, a library that, that the hub team has built to um, provide charting. Um, it, it really actually utilizes a other charting library called AmCharts under the hood and it provides a simple interface for that. Um, there is not a, not a, currently a public reference um, about that. Um, I guess I would request if you're interested in that, you can either 
um, talk to my team on the um, Dev Summit Showcase, or you can email us at ask-hub at esri.com, and we can get that information for you and send it over. Great. Thank you, Andrew. Um, hi, Jess. So we have a question here from you about, can we have user accounts on the site that can track what data um, they've uploaded via Survey123? Um, if you wouldn't mind modifying your question a bit, uh, I don't know if I entirely follow, uh, but ArcGIS Hub does have integration with Survey123. Um, so in any way that you would be using a survey um, as you do through the Survey123 application, uh, you can surface that content um, and also use that as part of your hub site. So you can display a survey on a hub site to start generating feedback. You can also, um, take in those results, analyze them as you would uh, without Hub, but then surface that data again on your Hub is sort of, so to speak, close the loop um, and sharing that content with others. Uh, I do notice that you say uploaded, so I did want to mention um, you can have uh, accounts on your site, um, whether those are people that are within your ArcGIS Online organization uh, that you work with, or you have ArcGIS Hub Premium and you're using community accounts, you can have people actually upload content um, to your hub site directly without needing to go through ArcGIS Online. So it's a pretty simplified user experience for people uh, who may not be entirely familiar with your sort of backend content management through ArcGIS Online. Um, and that is something that you can totally track and monitor um, and help facilitate through Hub. Um, if you want to bring in content from others. Uh, beta testing is a great question. Um, is there beta testing for Hub? Um, there's not uh, necessarily a beta testing feature, so to speak, but we do have a Hub user lab. Um, we have a team dedicated to uh, doing research on uh, this Hub functionality provides um, and they actively connect with users like you to learn more about how your organizations are uh, using Hub. Um, and also they will provide sort of sneak peeks and opt-in opportunities for you to test out those upcoming features. Um, so one thing we are also in the works of improving too is that yes, with the weekly releases, we understand that that can be a lot to uh, keep on, especially if you are for your sites. Um, and so when we have significant functionality uh, in the pipeline, uh, we're using more in-app notifications um, to reach you uh, whenever you sign in to Hub uh, to let you know that, hey, something big is coming up. Um, for example, we're doing uh, uh, releasing a redesign of how we handle some content in ArcGIS Hub, notably your data maps and documents to start displaying those in a more uh, immersive full screen um, display. And so you'll notice signing into Hub next week, um, some in-app notifications with links to blogs um, mm -hmm. and other demo materials that are allowing you to kind of preview what those changes will be like. And of course, you can always reach out to us on GeoNet um, if you have any questions or feedback about a release or an upcoming change. So the Hub User Lab will be implementing Calcite then, I suspect. Um, I'd like a little more information on what you mean by Calcite uh, specific to Hub User Lab. Um, Calcite is available. There are some resources on how to use um, Calcite that I can connect you with here once um, I, I'll respond to you with some links. Um, so we've got another one here, it's Hub Apply Privileges. Um, yeah, okay, so this is um, that a hub site can really serve sort of as your hub of uh, for all audiences, whether there's some people that you want to give complete and total access to viewing the content, or there are some that you want to only share something with privately, say like one page or one app. Um, this won't necessarily work uh, for an iframe on a public page unless you have shared that iframe privately on a page. Um, and connected it to the public hub site. But the long and the short is that yes, um, 
depending on the group sharing, that's what Hub uses uh, to gauge who has view or edit access to certain elements. Um, so, so long as you're aware of ArcGIS Online's sharing model, um, that will apply to Hub, which means it's really cool that if uh, you want to share a public site, for example, uh, some private stakeholder content, maybe as pages that are embedded as menu links in your header, um, only those people upon signing in, those private stakeholders, uh, will see those menu links and will be able to access that private content while the rest of the hub site content remains public. Could a shared Google Doc um, be shared in an iframe in a hub page so it could serve as a way to chat about a story map, which would also be embedded in the hub page? Hmm, fun use case. Um, gotta think about that one. Andrew, any thoughts there? I think it would work. Uh, I've not seen that actually used. Um, yeah, it's interesting. Um, it's definitely something I, I would definitely be curious to see. Uh, we can try it ourselves and you can try it. Um, and if you find, again, as I mentioned before, if you have any, you run into something either just even want to share with us and it works, we'd love to hear it later uh, at ask-hub at Esri or a chat, um, or if you run into, a, into an issue, I could imagine where maybe some um, web applications don't allow themselves to be iframed in to other applications. Um, so uh, I don't think that's a problem for Google Docs, but it might be. So just there's some caveats on that. Um, I will mention that the ability to add um, discussions is something that we're actually actively working on and is on our future hub roadmap. So there's, this sounds like a really interesting solution in the near term, but also keep an eye out over the next um, few months as we're, we'll start sharing out more of our roadmap for the idea of having some of that kind of capability um, built into hub itself. So I have another question about the CalSite resources. Yes, um, I have a colleague uh, digging those up now um, and I will post those in the replies here uh, where I believe you all can see that. Um, you can also find uh, these resources. We can post about um, some of the uh, commonly asked uh, resources in this uh, Q&A um, on our GeoNet page. It's currently now as or has changed to um, our community at Esri, but you can also find a lot of uh, answers for these types of questions there as well. Katie, I'll, I'll reply to, there's two, there's both the uh, recent one and then there's the top, vote, top voted one that I think we also should just uh, voice here. So first there's one about the Python API and that's uh, Python API has come up in a, in a few cases, questions here. So uh, I'm gonna put a link into this question that um, there's a uh, hub Python module that extends the ArcGIS Python API. And that um, we developed this the hub Python module in open source and GitHub. And that's available and updated fairly frequently. And you can always get that um, directly. Um, it is also included in the ArcGIS Python API um, when that is released. And so much like kind of the difference between or similarity between Hub and online and enterprise sites is um, Hub is updated frequently and the Hub Python's updated frequently. And then when enterprise is released, you get sites. And when the Python API is released, you get that version of the Hub Python module. So you can go check that out. Um, that's both uh, a lot of good ways to automate um, and script Hub for uh, creating sites, managing sites, initiatives, events. Um, there's a good question around uh, check for content updates that we can add. I already added an issue. You can go over there and upvote it and add some more details as well. Uh, we'd really appreciate hearing about that. Um, and that again, that module works against both um, hub and enterprise sites as well. Um, the other question is, is really reflected in, in the uh, voting here is, does enterprise sites, um, it does not currently allow anonymous data download. So yes, there's currently, it's not currently in 10.8 or 10.9. There is a, a restriction in ArcGIS Enterprise for export, which is a really great feature um, that you can enable in online. And, and I believe you can enable an enterprise too that we rely on when possible. And currently that does not allow price sites to use it for generating automatic 
or anonymous downloads. It's something we're working with the enterprise team on. We hope to add in the future, but right now we can't um, give a defined. Uh, but yeah, related to that one, another that just came up was the original Hub app open data allowed the public to download data anonymously. That is still a feature. That's still a, a core uh, feature of Hub. Um, line, we can do that for uh, public data sets as well as for private um, or restricted access data sets. And that utilizes that export feature. So for that to work, you do need to have export enabled. Um, for your, I believe that is in the, our documentation to clarify that as well. Should not require an account to do that unless the data in with the groups that would generate uh, the download for that. Um, another question had might run into issues. It says downloading. Um, there's two parts there. First, um, generally we support n.0.4 goes back pretty far. We might have updated that to like 10. Um, but there are certain server configurations because there's many different variations where you might run into certain issues. Um, and so um, we have some information and some best, uh, Katie's added some great guidance in our documentation. Um, and you can look at that for how to configure your servers appropriately. If you're still running into an issue with it, um, you can contact support um, and they can help walk you through different configurations to improve to make sure your services are downloading. Something we've, we're adding to Hub, you'll start seeing this. There is there is actually a beta feature. There are features that we do have in beta today that you can enable and try out. Um, and those are often in the, they're in the site configuration and you can enable certain capabilities. One of those that's either out or will be very soon is a new download user experience, which uh, provides, one, I think one just more interactive and, and very beautiful uh, aesthetic interface as well as it'll provide you more information about when something is, not working with a server download, it provides a better user experience for that um, situation, also some more information. And then we're, I mean, last, my third point, we're also looking at adding more diagnostic information to Hub itself to let you know when there might be an issue with your server. There is some there now, um, so you can always go look into your content library and get some information and we're adding more in the future as well. Uh, Yes, beta features. Um, uh, for the, the question about the beta testing in Hub, um, I'm responding there with a link um, to the documentation on how you can turn on those features. Um, I got very much swept up into talking about the new in-app communications that's coming because that's currently a big project we've been working on. Um, so forgive me for that one there, but yes, turning those on is in your site settings. Uh, so you can check that out. One that uh, we can get to here um, before we run out of time um, is about uh, integrating an experience builder page um, on a hub site or page. Um, and if there are any downsides to doing this. Um, so Graham, I think in the presentation touched on this briefly uh, about using an experience builder uh, to give context to your data uh, in a way that feels appropriate with whatever that, that narrative is that you're trying to, to, to share. Um, and so you can embed that, I believe, Andrew, with um, the iframe um, card. Uh, and as with any time you're using the iframe, it's just generally recommended that you keep that to one to no more than two iframes on a site. Uh, but yes, it's um, totally possible to do uh, that sort of integration on your uh, sites and pages. Yeah, the app card works too. And the nice thing about that is it does lazy load. So if you do have a bunch, a lot of them on your page, it will, as it goes, as your page, um, someone scrolls down, it actually load them dynamically. It's, it's a feature we added about a year ago because people were doing a great job embedding a lot of dashboards and experience builder apps and things like that. So you still should try out your site, um, but it does, we've done a lot of things to make it progressively better there for people loading those. And the app card really helps take care of that as well. Um, it's also, there's a feature in the settings we mentioned before in the site settings where you can, the um, experience can actually have a full page view um, of it. And what's nice about that is it's, it's still embedded in the hub. So you get the branding and navigation, but it, you're actually viewing the experience um, or any of, any of the Edizuri's configurable apps um, kind of full screen in it as well. And uh, we'll see if in a moment, um, while Katie keeps answering questions, I'll see if I can find a good example and put it as a response to that comment. Okay, looks like we've 
gotten through our questions. Um, anything else that anyone would like to share? Um, I mentioned really uh, about the upcoming uh, changes to how content is shared. Um, that's something you can expect uh, to see uh, later on um, in the next month or so um, with uh, how users visiting your sites are able to uh, take a look at any data, um, spatial and non-spatial that you're sharing um, with full screen displays, which is really great because uh, this makes the experience of looking at um, even PDFs a lot easier and uh, it's just more expected user behavior. So we wanna sort of align um, the content we share in ways that people are expecting whenever they're coming to your sites to just find out more um, about uh, you know, what it is you're sharing. So um, keep uh, an eye out for that stuff. It's really cool and it'll be coming soon. Um, how many people can you give access to a hub? Uh, I'm not sure if there's a specific limit, so to speak. I would assume that maybe depends uh, upon um, any count that could be reached in a group. Um, but you could effectively, if you're sharing this publicly, share with as many people as possible. Um, but if you're talking about sharing it internally, uh, that would be, it's all handled through groups, so that would be contingent on, on any uh, maximums uh, there. Yes, and so if you want to take a look um, in the comment, Andrew was able to provide a link uh, to a site in the wild, as we call them, um, for how uh, you can um, first start to demo an ad into a hub site. Okay. Well, I think we're at time, so. Um, thank you everyone for participating. And Katie, thank you for your great moderation for, for doing this. And thanks to Graham for sharing all this information. Um, again, if you have any questions, reach out to us. I mentioned Ask Hub. And I'll, Katie, if you have any other wrap up info as well. Uh, yes, yeah. Ask Hub is great. Um, our GeoNet and our resources. Um, and if you haven't already, there's a link on the Hub resources page for signing up for the Hub newsletter. Um, that's a quarterly. Um, released at a quarterly cadence. So that's helpful too, that while we are releasing weekly, uh, we do provide these um, quarterly announcements that sort of summarize everything up into one um, place where you kind of go take a look at what we've been doing. Um, so yeah, uh, sign up for that. Um, and yeah, thank you for all of your great questions. Uh, for things that are in the document that weren't co well, they're covered here that you've not been able to find the documentation, um, I'll be able to use this, uh, it's been very great and helpful uh, content um, for updating that there as well for you moving forward. So thank you, everybody. Um, all right, well, that concludes our session. Thank you. Bye.